Welcome everybody. My name is John Tehr. I'm president and CEO of the Boulder Chamber. And you are joining us for one of our industry specific reopening education sessions, this time focused on the manufacturing industry. I wanna start by thanking our audience of business leaders for joining us today and committing your time to learning about the procedures for getting your business up and running in a safe manner. As everyone here probably knows, we need to get our economy rolling and getting our businesses up and running while protecting public health is critical to achieving that goal. I also wanna make sure to thank our Boulder County Chambers and all of our economic development agencies for their partnership in bringing this event together for our audience absolutely critical that we've been able to work so cooperatively across the county. And then finally, I wanna make sure to thank our Boulder County public health officials. They've heard our interest in working hard to get our businesses open and for working with us collaboratively to develop safe operating procedures that are sensitive to the unique business characteristics of our, in our community. Again, our shared goal is to get our businesses up and running and keep them running in a manner that protects the health of business owners, our workforce, and our customers. So what we start with today is gonna to be general information about the Safer at Home timeline. We will then get very specific with everybody about the procedures for the manufacturing industry and how to protect the public and, and the customers and your workforce um, um, in your operations. I note that while some of the procedures that have been handed down from the, the Colorado Depart Department of Public Health are mandatory, um, others are identified as critical by Boulder County Public Health. But we wanna thank them for the adjustments that they made already to these procedures in response to some of the the discussion that we had during our earlier feedback sessions last week. So it has been truly a partnership in developing the, the guidelines for your business and your industry. So without further ado, let's dive right in. And I wanna uh, welcome Zach, Zach Swank, who's the business and events liaison for Boulder County Public Health to take it from here. Thanks, Zach. Thank you, John, uh, and thank you to the Boulder Chamber for partnering with us and putting on these events. Uh, it's a, been a really great uh, partnership and we, we greatly value. Uh, so today, uh, we're gonna dive into what's allowed, uh, how to do it safely, and some resources to support you. Uh, and we hope to have about uh, 30 minutes uh, for your Q&A um, at the end. And I also want to welcome uh, Tom Bugnitz uh, from Manufacturers Edge, um, who will be uh, joining and sharing uh, his, um, his knowledge and expertise uh, from where he sits as well. Next slide, Alexander, thank you. Uh, so this web webinar is for critical and non-critical manufacturing. Um, I feel like that's pretty straightforward um, if you're if you're not on this list, if you're a different type of manufacturing, uh, this list is not exhausted, exhaustive. Um, and certainly, um, you know, all other manufacturing that's not listed on the critical uh, would fall into non-critical. So to review a little bit of a timeline, uh, as everybody knows, we've been under the stay at home order for some time now. Um, and Boulder County extended that order uh, through Friday. Uh, with the addition of curbside retail. Starting on Saturday, we transitioned to um, the Safer at Home uh, order statewide, as well as Boulder County's uh, face covering order, uh, though we should note that we're already under, in the city of Boulder, the city of Boulder's face covering order. But, you know, thinking long-term, uh, you know, it's important to recognize and remember that we're going to be under some version of um, uh, safer at home uh, until we have a vaccine, a treatment, or herd immunity. So it's going to be months, uh, not weeks. And you know, even after the current safer at home order is set to expire, 
uh, you can expect uh, you know, something like it uh, to be put in its place. Um, hopefully, if we all do uh, a good job uh, with physical distancing and following the guidelines, uh, we can avoid backsliding into a stay-at-home order again. No one wants that, um, but you know, certainly if it became necessary uh, to protect uh, public health uh, and save lives, uh, it, it would be done, but I think it just underscores uh, the, the critical um, nature of needing to follow these guidelines. So yes, we're still stay at home this week, same as the last five weeks, curbside is allowed, uh, and the city of Boulder is already under a face covering order, uh, and all of Boulder County will be under an order uh, starting on Saturday, and we're all now uh, anxiously awaiting uh, the transition to safer at home on Saturday. So Boulder County's face covering order, uh, face covering is required uh, if you are outside the home and can't maintain uh, six feet of distance, except uh, for any medical reason or uh, safety reason. Uh, if you're alone, for example, uh, you know, if you're you know, the only person in your office, um, uh, then there are exceptions under Boulder County's order there, uh, though your own industry um, uh, requirements from CDPHE uh, may be more stringent. Um, and obviously children under 12 uh, would struggle with this, uh, and so they are exempt. So what is safer at home? Uh, I think it's really important to emphasize that we still need to stay at home as much as possible. Um, though um, you know, manufacturing, non-critical manufacturing is open with restrictions, any work that can be done uh, from home should be done from home. Uh, and you know, outside of work, we still need to avoid uh, congregating uh, and you know, the best practice really is to stay at home. The virus is still just as contagious as it always was. Uh, and you know, we need to be even more diligent with our practices now uh, that we are beginning to, to open up our economy again and our society again. Uh, also, not all businesses are permitted. Um, some high exposure risk businesses uh, like, um, you know, personal services um, that require, you know, um, taking off a mask, um, you know, touching the face, uh, those are not permitted. Um, and vulnerable individuals cannot be compelled to work for any business. I should clarify, they can't be compelled to work um, on site. Uh, they definitely can, can still work. Uh, Thank you for that clarification. Yeah, um, and with that, uh, I'm going to pass it over to Alexander Phillips. Thanks, Zach. So um, I'm going to be going through these slides in kind of two parts. The critical manufacturing, which has been um, functioning already and um, pretty much the same, just maintain the six-foot distancing when possible. Um, discouraging shared spaces. So that's the critical manufacturing. Um, the non-critical has been added to the safer at home order now. And um, there it's, there's a lot of similarities and some differences to not have more than 10 people in a space and leaving that six foot distancing. That will start May 9th for the non-critical. Um, we have um, a compliance checklist to help you with the compliance. Of course, the compliance is mandatory. Using the checklist is voluntary and we're doing it as a help to you. So hopefully it is. And if, if it can be more of a help, we'd love some feedback on that. Um, and there's also posters available. Have those been posted yet? to the website? Yes, they are available both at uh, the Boulder County page and on the Boulder Chamber page. Thank you. Um, and enforcement, we're asking for voluntary enforcement. It's all about education first. Um, and I'll, um, of course, if somebody is blatantly going outside of um, not following the rules, then we um, we could elevate that, but it's really all about education. In a minute, I'll be showing you a phone number and some, uh, email to call. Um, please call with questions. 
If you don't know if you're within the um, compliance, that's what we're looking for. We're looking to help you. And, um, and if we don't have the answers, we will look for those answers. Um, so in the critical manufacturing, there's actually two different checklists, one for critical and one for non-critical. Um, and here's some high points from the critical manufacturing, ensuring proper ventilation, and avoiding um, gatherings of more than 10 people, and uh, providing gloves and masks. Um, and in, more information from the checklist from for critical, and a lot of this will, you'll see is very similar to the non-critical with some differences. Um, phasing, if you can, do phase shifts and even phasing breaks, um, you know, doing it in, um, so there's less people on break and less people working on the floor at the same time. Um, encouraging, if anyone can work remotely, even if they're not in the vulnerable population, that's a good idea. And of course, pr providing hand washing facilities and even providing breaks so people can wash their ha hands. Um, and then if there are customers, um, Tom, maybe you could address that, but I, if there are customers that are coming in, providing special hours for people of high risk and contactless payments so, um, and anything, so making it so they don't have to touch anything and you don't have to touch anything that they touch. Um, and the non-critical, and this is for the non-critical, that'll start May 9th, um, the checklist recommends one-way flow areas and avoiding people facing each other, using um, barriers between workers when possible, um, and limiting sharing tools, equipment, even pens, paper, and again, taking the breaks and lunch in shifts um, to avoid large groups of people either on break or working at the same time. And then um, for the non-critical employees checklist to, um, you could um, designate someone that can help, that can maybe dive a little bit more into the checklist so they know um, the ins and outs of it and help educate everyone else and remind people. Um, I know it's hard to break habits um, of saying good morning and um, standing less than six feet away, but um, that's someone can designate um, person, the designated person can help with that or, oh, don't use that pen, use your own pen. Um, and then grouping employees into teams or shifts so that you're avoiding mixing the workers. So there's, um, you're only interacting with the same people each day that will um, limit the um, social contacts. Again, staggering lunch and breaks, that's mentioned several times in the checklist um, and encourage those that can work at home to do so. And then again, the non-critical with the customer list requiring um, a visitors to wear a mask, encouraging six foot distancing. Um, and then where to go for information on all this. The COVID-19, the .gov, the state site is um, a really good site. I'm gonna bring that up in just a second. Um, in Boulder County, we have now um, put in a specific link. You can go right to the business section, um, the boco.org slash COVID-19 business. So that way it's a lot easier to find all the Boulder County business information. Um, of course, the Boulder Chamber of Commerce, has some great information. Um, and of course, industry associations, I don't know if Tom wants to add to that. Um, and I'm gonna show you that site real quick. So here is um, the um, .gov site, the, um, the state site. And if you click on Safer at Home, there's two things to show you right here on this whole list. Um, on the left side of the bar, on the left side of the page, there's all different types of um, businesses. And here is the non-critical manufacturing. Um, there is no um, box just for critical manufacturing. 
And if you keep scrolling down, it falls under the best practices for all businesses is where you will find the um, part for the critical manufacturing. And if you keep going down, there's the FAQ, which is um, another great place for um, information. And here's mass guidance. And within each of the checklists, there are links to a lot of the information that um, you are um, want, um, that might be really helpful to you too. Um, so that's the um, the information that's out there on the web. Um, we'll be taking your Q and A through the chat function in just a minute. And I wanted to talk again about the um, email and call center. Um, the email covidbiz at bouldercounty.org. You can email questions, comments, concerns, whatever. Um, we're here to help figure out how to be safe and how to get our businesses open. Um, and the call center, eight to six, Monday through Friday, there's the phone number. I should say we have been getting lots of calls. Some people just um, individuals in the community asking about a certain business's rules, some complaints. You may get a call from us saying, oh, what's, what's happening? And we're just doing that to help educate. Um, it's all about education. It's, it's rare that it, um, I think we're almost everyone is just trying to do what, what's right. It's a very rare business that's outside of that that would be elevated. So please don't hesitate to call with questions on that. Um, we're here to help and educate and get you answers. Um, the next session for manufacturing is Thursday, May 14th at one o'clock. There's the actual link um, for it to sign up. And of course the link and lots of other good information is at the um, Boulder Chamber website. Um, so that, and I'm gonna bring up this slide again as we go into our Q&A. Great, thank you. I'm gonna first actually turn it over to Tom Bugnitz who uh, can really quickly talk a little bit about some of the resources Manufacturers Edge has. Um, they're similar materials. If you could give, just give us an idea of some of the things and support you're providing uh, manufacturers, that'd be great. You're muted. Yeah, let's unmute you. Yep. Got me now, Corinne? Yep, we got you. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, the, the, the couple of things to, to key off on what Alexander and Zach said, uh, we've got uh, on our website a lot of information like everybody does. We just put up a quick start guide, which is kind of the very basic get up and running fast uh, tends to tends to parallel a lot of the things that the county health departments are doing, but it's a it's it's a quick way for people to say what is the, what do I have to do? We've also put up a more detailed uh, part one of a bunch of checklists and and best practices on our website. Both documents can be downloaded. And Corinne, I'll send them to you. You could distribute them if you'd like. Uh, <clears throat> I think <clears throat> the other thing we're trying to do is work with companies. And most of this for the time being is, is absolutely free services. We'll just, we'll help anybody with anything they need right now. Uh, with things like plant layout, I know Alexandria talked about, uh, you know, one-way traffic and not facing each other and work groups. So we're, we're getting involved with a number of companies on how to lay out their plants a little bit more effectively to allow for much better spacing of people. We're, we're actually going beyond our recommendations of six feet for social distancing to as far as possible because most plants are are very large there's some that are that are very cramped but a lot of our clients have very large plants and and social distancing happens almost by design in those plants um, so we're we're really uh, focused on helping people understand what they have to do to be running safely but also what are the changes they can make physically in their plants to be to um, to evaluate how good they're being at keeping people separate. 
So a lot of help available for Manufacturer's Edge and a lot of our partners. So don't hesitate to reach out on any of this stuff. Um, we've got a hotline on our, on our website. Uh, you can call and ask questions. We've got a lot of materials there available for downloading. We talked about posters. We've got a number of posters that are out there. So we've collected stuff from all over just to kind of put it in one spot for manufacturers. And Corinth, I should have uh, started by thanking you and John for allowing us to be on this. This is a great service you're providing. Thank you, Tom. Uh, as he noted, we'll send out the link, but we had a lot of technical questions on the call last week that were about you know, design of facility and so forth. So there's another resource out there for you. Everybody on this call will get a recording of this video, a copy of the checklist, links to resources like signs and the health check form and so forth. Uh, we had a question saying, our employees are asking how long it is likely they'll be need to wear a mask in the workplace. None of us have a crystal ball, but do, what are your thoughts? So the Boulder County um, uh, face covering order um, goes through the 26th of May. Uh, you know, obviously at least that long. Um, however, jumping back to the earlier slide about, you know, until we have treatment, until we have a vaccine, or until we have herd immunity, uh, we're going to continue to need to modify, you know, what was previously our normal activities. Um, and wearing a face covering is a, a simple and effective way uh, to help reduce the transmission of disease that, that allows us to continue to go about, you know, our, our work lives and our daily lives uh, outside of work. And so, uh, you know, I would say it's going to be months, um, you know, is, is my crystal ball there. If, if, you know, if, if I had to guess, uh, really until, until we've got a treatment, a vaccine or herd immunity, I would expect to be uh, wearing a face covering. A little bit more about the face coverings. What, what kind of face covering is required? Does the employer have to provide it? What are some, what's some more guidance on face coverings? Great question. Uh, so there are, um, you know, in the checklist, um, there's a little bit more specificity there. Um, you know, in terms of employees or employers providing it, you know, think about, you know, your regular PPE for your employees, you know, that is, um, you know, a, a mandated uh, part of your business and, you know, it's required by OSHA for you to provide that. Uh, in a similar vein, um, face coverings uh, would, would also uh, follow that, you know, it needs to be safe uh, for your employees to work at your place of business. Uh, and that is one of those factors. Corinne, could I add something to that, to Zach's comment? Absolutely. Um, it, we've been working with the state, uh, the state task force on a number of, of issues about making PPE available. Uh, the state has just opened up something called Energize Colorado, a website, uh, I think it's energizecolorado.com. And what we're putting up there is a marketplace for, for small businesses to be able to go to a central site and order uh, small quantities of PPE, masks, gloves, hand sanitizers, uh, wipes, those kind of things. Uh, it's, it's going up in phases because of the difficulty of getting some of these materials. But I think as of uh, probably Monday, there'll be a central marketplace for people, small businesses to order those kinds of, of equipment, particularly the masks. And in the, in the meantime, uh, thanks for that, Tom. Um, you know, I, I look forward to that resource being available. Uh, in the meantime, Boulder County uh, on our business page has put up a list of guidance and resources uh, for PPE. Um, it's, I anticipate probably not going to be as exhaustive uh, as what the state is coming uh, up with, but we wanted to get something up now, knowing that folks are are um, you know planning to open as soon as they can. Uh, our list is what we've been able to find. Uh, we don't endorse any particular vendor over another, of course, um, and there's no guarantee that uh, you know the vendors that we provided um, will have exactly what you're looking for. But it's a place to start, uh, and so you can get that at the oco.org backslash uh, COVID-19 business page. Yeah, Zach, I suspect yours might be actually uh, more robust than the states right now that we've mm -hmm. been working with. But it, it will be actually um, 
a, a warehouse of stuff um, distribution, not just going to other manufacturers. So uh, the pricing should be pretty good on that as well. We're just trying to make it as easy as possible to comply with all of these requirements. Great. Thanks, so there's a question, that if, if there's a positive test for coronavirus within our workforce, what's required from the business side as the next step? Great question. Uh, so on the Boulder County page, uh, there is a COVID-19 outbreak guidance for businesses uh, PDF. Uh, and in there, you will see that if you have two or more employees who are experiencing COVID-like symptoms or that have pos tested positive, uh, you do need to report that to Boulder County Public Health. That is a required uh, reporting. It's uh, officially determined an outbreak and our epidemiologists will follow up with your business. If you have a single employee, um, you are not required to report to us uh, by law. Uh, however, uh, we would appreciate um, a, a courtesy of knowing that. Uh, whenever there's a positive test, that information is tr about that individual is shared with our epidemiologists and they will follow up with that individual. Uh, however, that's based on where the individual lives, not where the individual works. And obviously we know uh, in, in Boulder County and the surrounding counties, a lot of people live in one county and work in a different one. And so it's helpful to know if you have uh, employees who have tested positive, who may live, at, particularly if they live outside of Boulder County, uh, so we can uh, be informed and, and be in contact with you about uh, what the exposure risk might have been at your business. One of your colleagues also said to refer symptomatic employees to the CDPHE symptom tracker, Correct. which is also in that guidance. It's a form that allows um, individuals to, for you to track and then um, better trace it back. There is a question about temperature checks. And on my last call, we had a lot of them, but can you discuss temperature checks? What's the guidance? Are they required? What are some best practices? Yeah, so temperature checks uh, for manufacturing are required. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that, Alexandra. Um, uh, in terms of best practices, you know, on the last call, uh, we discussed, you know, there are a couple, and elsewhere, there have been a couple of questions of, you know, can employees self-administer uh, their temperature checks? Um, we would not encourage that at the workplace uh, because then you have multiple people uh, touching the same, uh, uh, temperature monitoring device. Uh, we also had questions on the last call about, um, you know, it's we're starting to get into the warmer time of the year. Uh, folks are going to be coming in from outside uh, where it's hot, uh, and that their their temperature may be elevated. Um, you know, if you if you have an employee with an elevated temperature, um, you know, that's, but you know, they're experiencing no other symptoms. Uh, one thing you could do is has asked them to, um, you know, before allowing them into the facility, um, ask them to, you know, go find some shade um, and come back in, in five or 10 minutes uh, and take their temperature again to verify, uh, you know, if it was, if that's their actual temperature or if it's just in, you know, because they were standing out in the sun. Zach, do you recommend the standoff temperature uh, gauges? Um, we are not recommending, um, you know, any particular gauge over, over any other. That's not a level of uh, specificity that we're getting into. Um, but certainly, you know, any, any contactless gauge uh, would be preferable uh, to, uh, uh, you know, a gauge where contact is required. Yeah, okay. On the last call, Lane Drager said, uh, definitely don't get a thermometer that sticks in people's mouths because that's definitely not a best practice. Uh, and there is, there is also, um, yesterday there came out uh, an update to the state uh, safer at home order uh, with some allowances for employees self-monitoring their uh, temperature at home uh, and then reporting that to work. Um, I would need to review that um, and get back to everybody if manufacturing was one of those categories where that was allowed. Um, and I've checked the state page today. The updated 
amended order is not currently linked, um, but I would expect to see that soon. Uh, so if you go to the state safer at home page, scroll down to the very bottom at the very last part of the page is the link uh, to the safer at home order. Uh, and again, uh, you know, later today, tomorrow, I would expect to see that link updated with the amended version uh, that includes that language. Taking temperatures at home is listed under the guidelines for the non-critical. Mm. Thank you, Alexander. But as we learned on the call before, that's for the smaller, less than 25 um, employees. So there was some need for some more guidance on to how big a business needed to be um, in order to do that. So I know that you guys were gonna look back and see if there is a size of business requirement and we'll make sure that gets out. Uh, Tom, you, you said, uh, mentioned something on the last call when you were a participant uh, about contact tracing and you're recommending uh, manufacturers keep track of people coming in and out of their facility. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, Corinne, I actually had that on my notes as well. Thank you. Um, yeah, what, what we're doing for our company and, and we go out and, and we'll start soon again visiting companies directly. Uh, we've required that uh, wherever we go, we do a couple of things. One is that we keep a log of everybody that any of our people have talked to, been interacting with, been in a room with, been in a meeting with. And if they're in a meeting with more than one person, all of those people. And so we're keeping that log at, at our office. Uh, and then we're recommending uh, companies keep track of everybody uh, who comes into their company, visitors, supply people, mailmen, whatever, um, that interacts with any of their people, S just for our own almost mini contract tracing. Uh, if we have somebody on our staff that tests positive at some point, we wanna know where they've been and who they've, they've contacted and to give the health departments a little leg up. And when we've gone to a site now, we're keeping track of that site for two weeks after we visited, after the last visit. So that if anything changes at that company, we know who in our company had been had been exposed potentially as well. So I think the more uh, any companies can can do that, can keep track of who's there, who's interacting, particularly visitors, but everybody, uh, we're going to be better off. We, we won't we won't let our people go to a um, a manufacturer that doesn't have these kind of protocols in place for temperature checks for distancing, for all of the, the normal things we're saying companies should be required to do. Uh, and companies are also telling us they, we can't come unless we have the same protocols in place. So I think, I think uh, keeping track of the people is gonna be one of the key things that companies are gonna to wanna to do. Okay. Does anybody more, have any? Oh, yeah, ahead. One more thing I'd like to mention on the updated order. Um, uh, there is, now a entire section on non-critical manufacturing uh, that was not in the original uh, safer at home order. Uh, so Corinne, I just sent you uh, that document as well as a uh, track changes version uh, between the original safer at home order and the updated order um, so that folks can easily um, filter through and, and just see what's different between the two. But you know, the biggest thing and most important thing for this group is, of course, there's a whole new appendix uh, that addresses uh, non-critical manufacturing specifically. Great, we'll get that out to everybody. Um, in the email following this, we just have to wait for this, this to upload and we'll send all the resources out to you. We have another question come in. It is about the temperature checks again. Can we talk about how to, how to for doing daily onsite checks? in a way that is HIPAA compliant? Can you mandate this or just make the thermometers available and hope for voluntary? So one note on HIPAA, um, you know, it, HIPAA only applies to uh, certain uh, protected uh, industries. So obviously healthcare, right? Um, you know, many, many business types, um, do not fall under HIPAA, you know, for example, retail, uh, you know, for manufacturing, I think it would, you know, depend a little bit on, you know, what type of manufacturing you were doing. Um, but really HIPAA is intended for, um, you know, businesses and operations that are collecting, um, you know, personal health information. However, uh, the American with Disabilities Act uh, 
does have um, you know, health privacy uh, requirements. We have asked our attorneys um, many times, uh, could we get a document that says, uh, you know, that we can send out to everyone that says, okay, here's what you need to do under ADA, here's what you need to do under HIPAA. Um, and it is just too uh, unique uh, to each business uh, for us to be able to provide that Blake and guidance. Uh, so we would encourage you uh, to seek uh, your own legal counsel uh, from your own uh, resources. Uh, you know, maybe Tom uh, has suggestions as well, but uh, you know, we've, I, believe me, we've been asking uh, for some clear, you know, a how-to on, on HIPAA, uh, and uh, because of the complexities of it, uh, it is just not something that, that we can provide guidance to you on. Yeah, Zach, I can't add anything to that. If anybody understands HIPAA, please call us to start with uh, and all those regulations. Um, but I think what, what we're recommending is just kind of the common sense anyway, which is, you know, personal privacy is still important. Um, you know, making sure that we're keeping records secure is still important. All the things that we would do normally to protect our people and their privacy, we have to continue to do even in this environment with taking temperatures and monitoring symptoms in that. And the second part of the question here I see is, can you mandate um, on-site temperature checks or just make the thermometers available and hope for voluntary? Under the order, uh, some form of, of temperature monitoring is required, uh, you know, whether that's um, at home by the employees and then reported daily uh, to your business or um, you know, on-site at the business, but it is required, it is mandated, um, and so yes, you can require, and, and you have to. Zach, can you clarify that the Boulder County order will follow the state order? I think there's a little confusion as, as to uh, where you're getting some of your requirements and, and what, um, where you're basing your order on. Sure, yeah. Um, so our uh, announcement should come out in uh, 23 minutes, uh, if it's on time. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll, spoiler alert, uh, we will follow the, the state's order with the exception of uh, Boulder County's face covering uh, uh, order, uh, which has already come out. Uh, but everything else, um, uh, to my knowledge at least, uh, will follow the, the state order. And so, you know, our checklist, for those of you who were in last week's feedback session, um, you know, we, we had a, a variety of other things in there in our checklist, um, and we were considering making some of those required under uh, our own um, implementation of the state's order. Uh, but right now, uh, we are the, the requirements in Boulder County are the same requirements from the state. Uh, and then the additional uh, items in our checklist are, you know, best practices that we've included, but not required. Great. And one of the things that you know, all the chambers and economic development and cities in, in Boulder County have created uh, is a we are open kind of self certification that says we're following um, Boulder County and state of Colorado's public health standards and requirements um, to just kind of show the public that you have that self certification and that you are um, following and creating a pay, uh, safe work environment and safe place for customers to come in. So that will be part of the resources that you get. Are there any other questions out there? Um, I'm, I'm not getting any in the Q&A and I don't have any in the chat. So I just wanna give one more minute for questions. Alexander, do you have anything else you'd like to, to say? Yes, um, two things. Um, one is that the non-critical manufacturing information from the state just was released yesterday. So we're um, working to understand it just as you are and they're, um, keep checking the website if there are any changes and do call us for questions as we're understanding that the critical manufacturing really hasn't changed that much. And Zach, if you can just confirm the non-critical manufacturing can start May 9th, that will, that will be a little different than the state. Correct, yeah, yes, the, that's a really good point, Alexandra. The timelines obviously in, in Boulder County are different than the states. Um, because that you know the state went to safer at home sooner than Boulder County did, so some things were permitted on April 27th. Some things were permitted 
on uh, May 1st, some things were permitted, permitted on May 4th, or in Boulder County, all of those things happen on May 9th. And then one last thing to cover. Uh, Zach, if you could talk a little bit about uh, how we're doing one of these for Spanish only, for anybody that would like to either send employees or businesses to learn a little bit more about the requirements. Yeah, um, really great point, Corinne, thank you. Uh, so on Wednesday evening, tomorrow evening at six o'clock, uh, we are having a Spanish only, Spanish language uh, uh, webinar uh, where we'll be answering questions on any business type. Uh, so that would be a great time for employees to attend uh, as well as um, you know employers. Um, and we're doing that in partnership, of course, with the Boulder Chamber, our very good friends, uh, as well as the Latino Chamber of Commerce. Great. There is information on our website as well as the Latino Chamber's website for that. All right, I had a couple more questions come in. So to clarify, we can send employees back on Saturday, which is May 9th. Uh, subject to all of the other you know, uh, conditions of the safer at home order, uh, yes. But you, you know you need to make sure there's a lot of details, right, and, and a lot of restrictions there. Uh, and so you would need to be able to have you know all of those protocols in place uh, and be able to follow all those requirements before you could uh, send employees back. Um, but if you're able to meet all of the requirements of the safer at home order, then yes, starting on May 9th, uh, employees could return. Okay. One of our uh, one of our participants asked, if we've developed protocols, is there someone on this call or otherwise whom we can run those by to ensure we're doing all the right things? I see Bill Hayes, our safety officer is on the call. Bill, do you want to handle that one? Oh, I had a feeling that uh, <laughs> uh, make that request. Um, yes, certainly. Um, you know, in uh, until such time as we become overwhelmed with them, uh, but yeah, for the time being, certainly, if uh, if businesses come up with protocols that they would uh, like us to uh, provide input on, I'm certainly happy to look at those. And uh, folks can uh, send those to me at b hayes b is in boy h a y e s at Boulder County. Dot .org Also if you send them to the the covid biz uh, at bouldercounty.org uh, email address here um, then we can also get them to to bill so either works great All right and one last question will the spanish session be recorded for future viewing I'll answer that one yes uh, so like the rest of them we are we're recording all of these for replay um, so that you can share them with others rewatch listen to question and answers and so forth. Zach, to close it out, will you talk a little bit about what the purpose of the weekly uh, check-ins are? Yeah, um, so uh, based on the feedback from our session last time uh, and knowing that the um, orders are ever evolving, right? Uh, I mean, we've already had the, the first update to the Safer at Home order um, we are holding weekly uh, sessions, and by we, uh, I mean Boulder Chamber uh, and, and Boulder County Public Health is, is joining um, to provide uh, the most up-to-date information as well as um, just general office hours for questions, um, comments, and concerns. Um, it could be a great time to also share best practices between, um, you know, between manufacturers uh, and, and lessons learned. Uh, and Corinne, I believe you're also intending uh, or exploring the idea of bringing in different speakers uh, as the weeks evolve. Correct. Whether that's, you know, getting a better gauge of the economic impact or, you know, having individuals like Tom or others on calls to talk about best practices as more and more businesses um, start to reopen and face the reality of, of um, some of the requirements. If we don't have any further questions, I'm going to pass it on to John to kind of close it out. Sure. I, I just want to close with a couple things. One, uh, just again, thanks for the folks who are participating in this call. We just have to make sure that as we push to get businesses open, 
that we're also staying in compliance with Boulder County Public Health guidelines. It's, uh, it's not just about following the rules, it's about keeping people safe, which allows us to maintain operations. Absolutely critical, we do not wanna go backwards. So thank you for your attention to this. And I urge you to stay connected with us either through those weekly sessions or the online materials that are being provided. Um, I also wanna make it clear, you know, we, the Boulder Chamber, are very, very proud and honored to host this and uh, work in partnership with Boulder County Health uh, Public Health to put all of this together, but it's a partnership of all of our regional chambers and uh, economic development authorities. They, they all are working to make sure that they are addressing the needs of the businesses in their communities. Um, but I do have to close with thank you for the folks who participate in this panel. Tom Bugnitz is not only just a great friend, but he's a great resource at Manufacturer's Edge. So urge you all to uh, check out their resources. And then the team at Boulder County Public Health. Again, I know they are in a tough position here. This is a very difficult challenge, public health issue number one, but also they recognize the balance of trying to get our economy rolling again. And so they've been a great team with us in, in that effort. So thanks all for attending today and we'll look forward to seeing you at some of the follow on sessions, but go get those businesses open. Let's get that economy back rolling again. Thank you, John. Yep, thank you, Tom. Thank you.